Good day everybody, this is Jason Souls with Extreme Software and I'm going to be showing you a quick demo on how to import a CSV cut list into Extreme Cut. Um, an example here, I have Excel open with a little cut list here. I've got a job, elevation, part number, part description, part length, quantity, and I've got some angles. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm looking at Extreme Cut now. And... Um, what you have here is two ways to import parts. You have an import Athena cut list, or you can import anything, any kind of a cut list. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and grab that CSV file, so I'm going to go ahead and type it in here. Hit open. And you'll notice here that we can now map the file. I'm going to go ahead and use new mapping for a moment just to kind of show you how this works. We'll ignore the first record, and you'll see that these are the map the fields that come in from the CSV and we just have to map them to our fields in um, the Extreme Cut Optimizer. So job would go to job, elevation would go to elevation, and so on. Uh, notice here that there's several um, parts. We've got many or several different fields, location, uh, floor tag, finish, elevation. We can do a whole bunch of different things um, if you want to um, or you can just do uh, the very simple stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and when, when you're done here you can actually set up your leading edge and trailing edge angles how you have them listed in your cut list uh, if you've got them listed at 75 degree angles that's where they're going to be if you've got them listed at 105 that's how we're going to pull them in um, so we can go through and, and just set the whole file up that way or um, we can use an existing mapping. At the end of that, you have the ability to save that as anything you want. In this case, I've already done it. I'm going to just use selected mapping. You'll see automatically all my parts just show up here. Um, individual, er, the quantities here. Here's all the parts that are contained in that job. Here's the individual breakdown. Um, we can put price per foot, weight per foot if we want for each part. And that's pretty much what we can, what we can do with our parts. Uh, the next step here would be optimization settings. Um, we, we can do best yield, ordered fit, long, short, short to long. Now best yield is going to be the best yield. Um, regardless of what parts get cut first, ordered fit would be based on the order that the parts came in from your cut list. Uh, long to short would be the longest parts would get cut first. And short to long would be the shortest parts get cut first. Uh, I have one saved here with best yield. I'll just run through the uh, different settings here. We've got start waste, end waste. That means you're going to cut an inch off each end of the bar. So you've got a nice clean bar. Um, our saw blade thickness, our cut allowance. Um, <clears throat> this means if we've got an angle cut, we can add an inch to those angle cuts. Uh, so we can straight cut them all first, label them, and then go ahead and, and bring those back to the saw again and do the miters. Uh, we can do minimum cut piece length and maximum. Then we have a minimum drop length. Now, drop to us is a part that we would save for future optimization. Um, so basically, in this scenario, six inches and up would be saved as a drop. Um, and we have the ability to then save those out to a drop list. Um, in this case, because we're in the optimization side of things, we have the ability to import a drop list uh, right here. I'll just pull one in. And we can pull these parts in from a previous job and mix them into this optimization so we can get a better yield. I'll just go ahead and pick none for now. Uh, the last step in this whole uh, scenario is to set up how we would like our stock lengths to be. By default, they're 24 feet. We can go in here and we can change that, though. If we wanted to have uh, the software go ahead and tell us what the best stock length to use for this particular job would be. We can set up a couple of parameters, minimum uh, stock length, maximum stock length, and uh, how, how you know every 12 inches we can find the optimization. We can do multiple sizes. We can do one, two, three, four, five. Um, it would tell us we could order two different stock lengths and get a 99% yield, that kind of thing. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as one. I'm going to apply it to all materials. You'll notice now that um, the stock length comes in for all materials. Actually, let me just check that one more time here. I didn't add it. Got to add the range. 30 feet every 12 inches. Add range, apply to all materials, and now we get them in here. Now there's a routine 
that's associated with each one of these. So once I click optimize, um, it's going to bring up a screen that shows me. Um, <clears throat> oops, let me go back here. There we go. It shows me all the different uh, stock lengths based on their yield. Uh, we can simply use the default ones and these would just be our orders um, or we can just select one that we would like to use. Uh, you can see the difference between 24 foot and uh, 28 foot here for this particular part is about 14 percent so you'd have to figure out what your charge is going to be on eight pieces and what your upcharge would be and see if it's cheaper to order 28 or 24 but it does give the option. Now we can double click the 24 and use that which I'm going to do well, there's a big optimization difference there 77 to 192 and then we'll go to 24 over here there it is now everything's 24 foot stock lengths all I do at this point is hit accept brings up another dialog now these are all the reports that are going to come out um, and then we've got that leading edge angle and trailing edge angle that pops you can actually tell it hey regardless of how I brought him in I brought him in at 75 degrees but for this cut list I want my saw guy to see 15 so you can change that to 15 or negative 15 based on what you want for your leading and trailing edges All right, or you can just leave it as default the other thing we can do is change our colors how they display um, we can export our NC files or export another map CSV that's optimized to go right to your saw and we can save our drops to a new list or to an existing list. Notice there's an existing list that I showed you in the beginning. We could save all our drops to that. So we kind of have a rolling inventory of all of our drops. Once we're done setting that up, we just hit OK. And out pops all of our reports. There we go. Now, this first one is going to be a label with a barcode. Okay. This is a very handy uh, label because it does more than just give you a visual representation of the bar. But say you had angles, which I think I have some angles down through here. There was one right there. Um, if you cut all your straight cuts first, um, you might you might have added an inch with that cut allowance there. Um, I didn't put anything in there, so it's straight. You know, it's right at the corner. Um, but this gives you the ability to to label those straight cuts, and and then you know be able to stack these separate from the parts that are actually straight. This way they can be recut with the proper angles. It gives you all your angles based on your your selections. So that's a nice little little report. We have a straight bar report that's non-graphical. This is another label. And we have our bar diagram report. It shows us the project name, project number, the date, the yield, the part number, and then uh, of course the part name. 24 feet, we need 11 of them. It tells us required bars is 11. There's going to be 52 cuts out of these 11 bars. And here's our first layout. I need four of these. There we go. My second layout, I need three of. Third layout, I need one. Fourth layout, two. Fifth layout, one. And I'm on to my next part pressure plate. Um, as you can see we do have a nice graphical representation of the angle as well as um, the bar. And this um, this list would match your NC output or your CSV output to your saw so you can even if it's automated you'll have um, this to view so you know what the saw is going to do next that kind of thing um, or if you're just using you know DeWalt chops out in the shop you can use this list to cut right from and it's all optimized. Here's a generic cut list report by part number and the last report is going to be our material summary with our, our cost analysis here. So if we put a cost per foot in or weight per foot in it would give us a total cost and total weight. We could actually calculate our freight, get it all figured out and then add that to our to our overall uh, cost. And That's pretty much the uh, input and how to set up your optimization. So good luck. I hope you enjoy the trial, and we'll see you next time.